Am I getting a countdown? We are live. There we go. Okay, everyone, I hope you're taking your seat and uh, or sofa or bed or bath, wherever you're choosing to watch this. Welcome to what is the uh, fourth in uh, this Unifrance series, uh, looking at some of the new realities that are, are emerging um, that we need to think about during this um, COVID crisis and the, uh, the lockdown. So we began looking at distribution and sales. Uh, we moved on to look at uh, new business models. And then we looked at some of the public institutions and how uh, their role might have changed or might be developing. In each of those sessions, I think we discovered uh, or that there was less uh, of a feeling that everything was changing than that trends that already existed had been exposed and accentuated and indeed accelerated. So this next um, session, I think very logically looks at animation uh, animation to me has always felt a little ahead of the curve when it comes to some of the developments of recent years. Um, if we look at uh, video on demand, French animation has always been well represented uh, on those channels. I think um, the, the, the um, video on demand is something where uh, the, clearly that's a new area of finance that's coming in. Um, television, obviously, still um, critical. Those relationships still um, exist, albeit challenged during this period. And of course, feature film hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, it's still an area of potential growth. I think also during this period, one of the reports that's coming back um, from lots of, uh, of the on-demand platforms is that animation is one of those areas that's doing well. Um, the, the audience, the captive audience at home, um, it would appear, seems to have, uh, have had particular interest in um, animation and we hope in quite adventurous ways. Um, I'm sure we can have a look at some of those during this period. But what we're really looking at here in this session uh, with the panel is um, how this, uh, this market is going to develop, how animation is going to make its impact, how French animation in particular can take advantage of the new opportunities to reach out and grow a global market. So we've got a, uh, a really, um, a very strong panel that I think will um, give a lot of insights here, uh, beginning with uh, Benoit Bert Siward, who um, I think is one of those uh, very influential figures, I think, in the development of animation um, in France and Europe more, more uh, generally. Um, the founder and curator of, uh, of curator of the Animation Showcase, um, which is, has been both a screening series and an opportunity to highlight um, how, uh, the, the best in animation, but also uh, a strategy agency, which I think has tried to bring in um, strategic approaches for, Brit uh, for business that I think has made um, a, a very strong impact in, in a relatively short amount of time, and I think a, a key figure there. Uh, Anami uh, uh, Degrees uh, will be a, a familiar figure to some from uh, Lunamine uh, and Lumiere in, uh, uh, based in Belgium um, in production, co-production and distribution. Um, someone I think who's been involved with some of uh, the most successful um, animation projects of recent times. Um, then we have uh, Charles Boucan of um, SND Films, uh, sales agency. She's a director of international sales and distribution. And again, through with um, as as part of the the French uh, M6 network, I think uh, I think someone who has has uh, worked very strongly in the international market, and I think has been part of that drive in the in the growth of animation uh, and French animation in particular. Uh, we have uh, Christina Freitic uh, um, from Blitz Film Video. Um, again, the the market leader in the the Balkans region. Um, somewhere in terms of distribution and indeed exhibition, someone who's got a very strong um, sense of where the market has been going, but also perhaps can give us some good insights in the challenges she's um, faced and, and where we might go from here. We have uh, Charles Husky, who's the uh, distribution manager at uh, G Kids. Uh, again, one of those um, extremely well-known uh, New York-based companies that I think 
has driven forward um, a huge amount of animation in recent years. And then Eugene Kim from the, uh, the Puchon uh, International Animation Festival, um, again, one of those growing institutions and, and uh, hopefully um, has managed to avoid the, um, the, the shutdown. Uh, so the festival will actually go ahead. But I think the, the way that uh, the animation markets over the last few um, uh, months have, have worked out, all film markets, uh, we've had to learn hell of a lot about uh, new ways of doing festivals and new ways of doing markets. Um, South Korea itself, very strong links to uh, French animation. And I think it will be very interesting to get his insights on how that market can grow. Um, so let's start if we can with um, with you, uh, Anime. Um, what we're going to look at at this starting point is that that thinking. I, I wonder if you recognise that first. That thinking that the trends that we're now seeing have just kind of speeded up. They're the same trends that were there before, but they're trends that really, um, you know, we, we've we've now. I wonder if you could outline in your view what are those key trends in animation that COVID has made clearer to you. Or, is, or, or are there new things that you didn't know before this? Uh, well, let's say that uh, COVID um, made clear that animation is less affected. Um, I wouldn't say that it has some effects on, on the genres or um, specific animation, but in my opinion, it has in a way um, opened up some um, eyes from some people to see that in, audio, in the audiovisual sector that was a, um, a part that could continue work and um, that suddenly we ha gained some importance maybe um, towards what is animation. It was not only something for kids but something more. There, there was um, there's, there's cinema, um, um, there's much more than, than what people um, until now have seen, I think. Um, so in, in terms of COVID, we've been less affected and that's the most important thing. And is that going to have an impact quite quickly? Because if production continued in some areas in, in, in France whilst other things were closed down, are we going to see uh, a burst that will go into the theatrical market too as that picks back up? Um, well, let's say that um, we, since we haven't been affected that much, things will continue. I don't know whether this, this will have the huge impact, but th there has been an impact on, for example, um, a broadcaster that called me and asked me whether we could make something in animation since there was a lockdown and since they had to stop other audiovisual productions in live action and maybe we could think, do things in animation to to overcome the period where there was nothing to do so suddenly animation was like a way of telling stories a way of of continuing um the audiovisual market and, and uh, you know, this is all about habits that have been that have happened during this period. So, are you suggesting that that short-term um, opportunity that came along because you know there was less live action and people were looking more to animation, is that something where you think the broader market maybe has learned some lessons that will then become long-term trends? Yeah, well, I think the, the trend in in uh, animation for adults, for example, was already there a bit. Um, thanks to series like uh, Bojack Horseman, um, like other um, uh, series that are on platforms that are really aimed at um, uh, an older audience. I think that this is a trend that was already going on and it's now like suddenly um, more present, more in front. That, that's a really interesting point and it does gel with a lot of the discussions that have been had before um, from with VOD channels. A lot of them are talking about more experimentation. Of course, animation's been waiting forever to get past the stage where um, where 
people feel it's for kids. I mean, that, that Disneyfication of, of animation is something we've been talking about in Europe forever. But your sense seems to be that maybe this, this might prove something of a breakthrough. Yeah, well, breakthrough, we will see how long this period will still hold on, but at least there is, um, well, I think several things are um, today happening uh, that um, helps our audiovisual branch to be more open, opening towards other people and, and other uh, audiences. And I think it will help yeah. a lot. I'm going to come back to you on that, Anna, because I think the key for this whole session is that what are we going to do about it? I mean, if there, what, at the very least, what you're suggesting is maybe there are signs of a change of demand. How we can turn that demand into uh, a global strategy, I think, is critical to this discussion. And I want to come back to you, if I may, on some specific strategic moves, perhaps in some of the films that you are working with right now. I'd, I'd just like to get a sense from the rest of the panel before we come come to that though if I can move to you Chance the um, you you have been experimenting um, with different forms of release with different approaches um, during the the lockdown working I think quite closely to keep the uh, the traditional um, uh, release model engaged so you, you you're working with cinemas and you've been working with uh, uh, others to try and make sure that animation doesn't go off the radar so uh, Chance, maybe you could just give us, first of all, a sense of what you have been doing during this period and then how that translates into, tr into a longer term trend. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, generally, you know, we're a pretty fleet of foot operation in the States. Um, and to speak to the way that uh, recent trends have just been exacerbated by um, the uh, uh, COVID-19 situation. Um, there's been a lot of um, uh, independent theaters and independent um, distributors embracing a sort of uh, what you call a virtual cinema model, um, which is something that we are working on um, with uh, our recent release, Marona's Fantastic Tale, uh, which is a French production, um, which basically allows theaters to service um, a film digitally or sell digital tickets. And so it's a way to keep the theatrical community engaged and theater goers engaged even from home and presents a sort of curational approach to film releasing, even though we're all kind of quarantined and isolated in our <laughs> local places. Um, but I think even before that, um, you know, we tried to enforce the traditional, you know, 88 day theatrical window that exists in the States. Um, but, you know, I think we try to be mindful um, of what makes sense for each particular film. And so a lot of times we can do event style releases or releases that happen sort of like really quickly um maybe like one night only presentations and you you know put them out on vod um pretty expediently um and uh it's sort of a, a matter of identifying where most of the audience is um and uh trying to get them access uh get them access to the film as quickly as possible or in a way that um, allows you to strike while the iron is hot, I guess. Um, uh, so, I mean, in the short term, I think it's not just animation that's experimenting with this virtual cinema model, but um, I, I do think that in the long term, there's a lot of demand from theaters to stay involved on the digital front and to maybe have a sort of bifurcated approach. Um, and I think that is probably a good thing because you want this curational eye uh, extended into a film some video life um, and the way that it lives in the digital space as well as in the theatrical space and, and you know as you say this is going on for everyone you know why the difference with animation may be i think as anime was suggesting earlier on and this is very important to france of course is the the taste for animation and an understanding of the breadth of what animation can do creatively and culturally, I think maybe grows during this period. So have you seen any, are you getting any sense that maybe people who are being exposed uh, for the first time potentially during this period may be changing attitudes and minds? Because that makes a difference to you presumably in what you buy, what you, and, and, and how you approach animation going forward. Right, I think that, um people are, I would say, like a little bit more inclined to take risks or, you know, I think when 
when you say when you're thinking about purchasing a virtual ticket or renting a film at home, I think you're more inclined to be adventurous and to see something that you might nor not normally see um, in a way that in a theater you kind of want uh, you want to be lured uh, with major promises or with huge accolades or you know whatever um, to to like actually come out and spend you know the money for four tickets uh, for you and your family to see something. So um, I think what's nice is that in a digital space, the film can live that was a, as it was sort of originally envisioned. And so, you know, subtitled releases, I think are less uh, resistive in a home environment than they are in a theater. Um, because in a theater, if someone sees an animation, oftentimes the expectation is that it's for families. And so when it's not, say, available dubbed in English, it really changes the conversation around something. Um, I, I think Morona is a fantastic example of this, just because Morona's Fantastic Tale, which um, played at Honesty last year, um, it's the most recent film from Anka Damien. Um, it's like an extremely mature and very refined vision, <laughs> um, uh, but it's very colorful and very expressive at the same time. So people look at it and they say, oh, you know, like this looks like maybe it's for younger people. But then when you watch it, you realize that its subject matter is really mature and um, uh, I would I would say experienced it was the perspective, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, um, and uh, and I think in this particular environment, someone's receptiveness to that style of filmmaking or that particular perspective and animation specifically is 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 in increased or 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 at least um, you know uh, more out there. And, and, and over the longer term, that may change the way that you approach curation and the kind of things that you put on maybe there's a more ready audience going forward um which right and, and that will lead into the second part of this course is how we do that as an industry um maybe uh, eugene is uh, again i think the key for it, uh, for this first round of questions is really about the kind of things that are working and the kind of uh, uh insights we may have got into the audience mind the audience demand during this period and how we might better uh, reach that audience. But I wonder if you've seen yourself uh, as a festival, any signs of, uh, of, a, of a, a growing or changing appetite for French animation in particular? Uh, actually, the, the festival that be up is still going on. And then now this I'm spent time to watch the French animation films. And then just to, you said that like the K-pop, right? Yeah. Uh, because the, sometimes I also ask it to the like a Korean dot with the Korean the K-pop stars or the singers. Uh, but in case of the, the French the animation for the promotion of the films, there's no way to lend the other voice to the as a Korean dot, so it doesn't happen at all. However, sometimes we are thinking about like uh, the the other promotion together with the K-pop, the, the other dot for the French, the animation film, or sometimes they are singing in the, they are the, the like main score. So, yeah, we, we could do the think about it. And, and do, do you think there might be a bigger appetite for it now? Because that's, that's, that's um, an exciting idea that actually um, for French animation to make it that bigger impact in the global market, dubbing mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 the names that might be associated that are known locally are very, very important. So do mm -hmm. you think you've seen uh, more things that encourage you to maybe explore those opportunities of having like the K-pop association or, or more dubbing or more of that kind of approach? Uh, actually, we, do, I mean, for the past for the promotion, we do have uh, the honorary the ambassador system like the last year, there are, I mean, a lot of the international, they recognize the one, the, of the K-pop groups, the performed in the opening stage. So they are crazy at the moment. And then, however, the case of the, the animation dub seems to be the quite a different thing because they are already keeping busy to go to the, the, the all around the world. I mean, there's no time to get to rent the other boys. So sometimes, uh, actually, the, they really want to do that. However, they couldn't do that. I mean, it happened for the like the film 
the, from the European the, the animation films. However, the, in case of the Disney and Pixar the films, they hired the, some of the voice pool by the, the K-pop the groups, even the trolls. They, the, one of the Korean the, uh, the idol just to give her the voice and to sing at the end of the, the, uh, the films. So maybe it's a different way. However, I mean, for the case of the Asian market, the, all the audiences are waiting for the, like uh, some of the different voices from the, the other characters. However, for the, I mean, the French, the animation films, they adopt in France. So since you like a quite a, the, I mean, uh, like it looks like a, the, I mean, the very strange at the moment while they watch the films, like, like uh, the foreign films without the Korean dub. So sometimes it makes the kind of the, 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 opt, I mean, the, the, I mean, the difficult to go to the theater to watch for the French, the films. Is that the biggest, is language the biggest challenge still for marketing those French films and for getting those French films into your market? Uh, actually, I, I mean, it's not the case of the, you did want to get the, my answer. Like the, the, all the animation pants in here, they are actually the act, like uh, the, some of the, the like a uh, blockbuster films, uh, some of the huge the budget of films, have a case of the French films that it seems to be like a, like a, I mean, kind of a different we feel. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe, I mean. Uh, but, but, I, the, but, Eugene, I, I mean, I think you're saying something important here. You're saying that there is something distinctive about French and uh -huh. European animation, which has potential, but you're, you, I think you're saying that that market could still be bigger. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to understand what could be done in France to exploit that potential opportunity. Uh, it's hard to say, maybe, uh, just let me think about the thing happens. Seems to be like uh, the, the, I mean, case of the, 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 even the kids animation films, we doesn't have any the providing for the Korean dub in here because the, the market portion for the animation pill is the kind of the reduced market in here. So uh, seems to be quite, quite a bit different and difficult to promote the film. I mean, we have faced with that kind of situation. Okay, let me let me move to, to Benoit. Um, thank you, Eugene. I think I think what we've been hearing so far is that during this period there has been more experimentation. There is a growing demand um, within both established markets, but also Korea, which which does show a lot of animation. But we're hearing there that there that there are marketing challenges and language challenges that are still ahead. But Benoit, you've, you've, you've been watching and encouraging the growth of this kind of market. I mean, maybe you can start us off with perhaps what the, we might have learned recently that could become key to the exploitation of those opportunities going forward. So, yeah, I, I mean, on my um, particular uh, area of work, I work mainly with uh, short films. So it, uh, it, it, it's quite uh, very niche in the way that I I work mainly in building um, academy award campaigns or awards campaigns. So uh, for the in the question of the pandemic, I I personally haven't been too much touch right now because m most of my work uh, uh, is between. Um, August and uh, February when the award campaigns are running. But the fact that uh, we all had to face the pandemic uh, allowed us, I think, to um, both for long features and for short film to find new solutions uh, with online solutions like digital solutions. And that's something I really uh, looked with a lot of interest because even before the pandemic, I was trying to use those digital uh, tools a lot to train new ways to f uh, and find new ways to promote those short films. Um, the issue that we, we have with short films is usually we don't have a massive budget to do promo promotion, uh, promotional campaign and to, uh, to, to try to put spotlights because those are formats that are not very uh, um, 
profitable. Uh, so we are very, uh, uh, um, I would say, uh, uh, we, we don't have a, a huge wedge of, of, of um, uh, how can I say that? Yeah, our, our, our tools are very limited, uh, budget-wise and tool-wise. So, so yeah, those, this pandemic was very interesting in the way that the industry succeeded to find uh, itself new tools and use digital uh, to to outreach to to escape this 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 global block. And, and what new tools do you think were most significant? Well, the 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 you. I mean, we can clearly say that the the use of 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 the internet and uh, broadcasting uh, through through the streaming is was very interesting. Obviously, it doesn't replace real uh, physical experience of the black rooms uh, the, the, on the on screen, uh, but uh, definitely uh, we we can success to to reach an audience and uh, to uh, uh, still export our films uh, globally. T do you think there's any sense when, um, when you've, you watch perhaps a new and more diverse audience that's been watching through the various platforms, do you think there's a chance that we're going to be seeing new talent coming into French animation and for European animation uh, that maybe um, have got excited during this period that have been experimenting with tools that maybe will be coming to you and becoming businesses um, uh, from this point on? Well, I think we, with the use of uh, uh, export and distributing films through through the internet, we already saw a lot of new talent who who, who were using those tools uh, without the, the pandemic. But definitely, I hope and uh, I'm I'm sure that a lot of people use this uh, a lockdown situation to work on new on new uh, films. And actually, on my on my side, on my personal experience, I got uh, contacted during this time by a lot, by a lot of people potentially interested. Uh, to to have uh, advice or consulting for for short film. This moment uh, give gave, gave a lot of time to people to uh, I would say work uh, not on the everyday base emergency. They had time to think about what they wanted to do with project they had for a long time, uh, what they could do to improve stuff. So actually. Uh, yeah, on, on my side, I saw a, a clear a massive demand, uh, but people were not willing to start working straight away. They were more willing to see, well, let's see when the pandemic will be finished, finish. what, what can I do to, uh, to improve and have a, a maximum exposure on my work? So uh, what I'm trying to get to is um, the short term, maybe that people have been exposed, perhaps, and maybe looked at the opportunities um, for, for working themselves because, you know, F France has some fantastic um, businesses that, that, that have animation that, are, are, are com that can compete at a very high level. Um, but we, it's always that need for diversity and the replacement and new talent coming through um, that, that, you know, clearly you take some of that new talent and try to show how it can become business. But it, your sense seems to be that maybe some of those who've been trying now may over the longer term see uh, opportunities for, um, for, for building proper, viable, sustainable businesses. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the all, I mean, when we try to, um, when I work with like clients who wants to do like um, mainly ask her campaign and stuff like that, the main question I, I ask is never like, uh, uh, I mean, I, I refuse actually working with people who, uh, with that only want to get an Oscar. The, the, the real goal is to develop the person, is the, to develop the project, the long-term vision. And uh, this is what is very interesting to, to, to work and to develop with the, the clients and the, the producers or the directors. Otherwise, it's just meaningless, I, I would say. Having a statue is nice, but uh, it doesn't get you uh, a proper project or developing your, your career on itself. Uh, so uh, during the pandemic, for sure, uh, it, it gets, it, I think people had more time to think about more long-term strategy and what they want to do, uh, where they want to go. So that, that was a, a positive thing. Excellent. So uh, Charlotte, coming to you, I think, uh, again, we hear about the growth in audience demand. We're also hearing during this pandemic, I think that a lot of 
new people became interested in animation that could be critical to the future of diversity of French um, cinema. But it's been challenging times. I mean, for, for you, presumably, you know, with, uh, with television demand and so on, uh, and, and, and cinemas closed, this has been pretty tough. Um, are, are you feeling positive at this point? Sure, the, the thing is like with the cinemas closed, and luckily for us, we didn't have any movies, you know, currently uh, to, to be released or at least uh, not animation. Uh, we are optimistic given that, uh, just uh, to, to pinpoint because we are talking about animation, but uh, uh, us at SMD, we are basically doing commercial animation, which is, you know, basically family and, uh, and, and kids. Um, so luckily, our distributor have been uh, have been able to uh, to exploit uh, the movies on different platforms and TVs, and we know there have been you know huge demands because basically I think all around the world, uh, parents have been stuck with their kids, and I think uh, uh, I think movies and, and TV series animated and kid content is a, is a, is a good uh, babysitter, and no one judges any parents for, you know, forgetting the educational uh, part of, uh, of the business and putting their kids in front of the TV. I think we all needed that. Uh, but apart from that, if we, uh, you know, kind of look ahead for uh, what it means for the industry and, and the, uh, the French animation, uh, and in some of the uh, people in the panel are mentioning, especially animes, like the, the, um, the upside for animation is like, it's one of the first productions we had that were able to be back on track. Um, obviously, everything stopped um, when there was, a, there was a shock of the lockdown. But um, on, on the contrary of, uh, you know, fiction and everything, they were able to, to go back to work uh, m much quicker than everybody else. Uh, I mean, here in France, we are still figuring out uh, how to uh, shoot our next uh, movies and TV series, you know, even if it has really, uh, started. Uh, but on the contrary, uh, the producers uh, of animation have been talking to either projects we are already on board on uh, on projects we are discussing. They they were able to uh, to resume work uh, quite easily, so there will not be that huge gap in delivery of the movies. Uh, so I think it's um, it's a positive thing for uh, for the um, for the whole animation you know, world. Um, we have the issues of of markets and. And money, so that's a different thing. But when it comes to production, I think animation would be the first one to be ready, uh, you know, to be back on tracks. So I think it's really an upside. Uh, but that, that could be very significant. I mean, I mean, we've, we we're hearing um, a, a, about demand in the in the short term. We've been talking about what's happening during COVID, but this is something that comes immediate. This comes afterwards. This is a point exactly. where there's going to be a lot of high quality animation projects exactly. that continued. And yeah. and maybe a a, a a a a hole in some of the the traditional releases of live action work. Exactly. Uh, how how uh, does that feel to you? Like it might be a global trend. Does it feel to you like it's an opportunity that um, perhaps the industry needs to gear up to take advantage of, um, or, or do you think it's ready now um, to, I think to it's jump ready into that? Well, well, the thing is, like everything that is not negative is positive. <laughs> we are dealing with losses, you know, losses of income and, and the unknown. And at least when it comes to animation, like, okay, that one was supposed to be ready end of 2021, we'll be there. And, and I guess uh, when, when all things, you know, are said and done, uh, what we are looking at now and in, in the cinemas where we are slowly reopening is like, we need movies. Uh, to go and see, and obviously families are a big part of uh, the, the general business. Uh, once again, we're trying to pinpoint, you know, you know, niche markets or stuff, but families, uh, we need to have the families go back to the cinemas, and that's what we are all looking at, you know, when Milan mm -hmm. uh, will open and, and things, at least on the, on the animation, uh, we know that, um, that uh, we would not lose any time. Um, so that for me, it's, it's, real, yeah. uh, it's a real upside for, for, uh, for, for animation and especially, well, the, the French um, ecosystem. In and, and, and will we see an effect on um, both, um, uh, both demand and indeed prices? Do you think we'll, we'll see the 
the animation. I don't want to talk about prices right now. <laughs> there may yeah, be we the, might end up talking you know, about we, the market. Can, we, you know, we'd be able to, to rebound, but I think it has also a very uh, maybe reassuring, um, you know, and sorry to say the word, but um, with s and so product, uh, animation, if you are doing something, it's, you know, buyers, they know what they're getting into. It's a very specialized market. Yeah. But when you do that, you know, with companies such as Bleed, they know what they are looking for and, uh, and we'll be able to deliver it. Uh, tr truth be told, and uh, uh, before the panel, we're talking, you know, quickly about the market and everything. Um, we have one project that was in Bordeaux. Uh, that we started pitching, but uh, truth be told, uh, we need to see a bit more when it's going to start again to be able to price again. But Christina, please tell me I'm wrong and you're ready to open your wallets and, and, and things. Uh, we, we need the situation to stabilize a little more, but, but I'm pretty confident that uh, the, the prices will be stable once again uh, compared to the uh, economic crisis we have and, and the struggles of uh, of the so, industry, uh, but I think it's yeah. a very proper, like, you know, you know what you're getting into and, and, and to go back to French animation, generally speaking, uh, I think if, you know, distributors buy French animation, it's not because it's French, it's because it's, you know, top notch quality and story wise, animation wise in terms of technicity and everything. So we, we the industry, I shouldn't say we, because we're not producers or, or any, but, uh, they know that you can have, uh, you know, great movies for, for a great budget and, and great stories, even franchised. So, so, so w w in terms of, of, of definites at the moment, what we, can, what we can say for certain is both that there, will, there has been an impact on production of, of live action film, and there's been much less of a, of a problem in terms of animation. So although we don't know exactly how that market's going to shake out, the reality is that there is a stability around animation that, that perhaps... Th that's the, the take I had yeah, from, from the producers I've been uh, discussing during the last you know, okay, three months. Okay, cool. I'm going to ask Christina the same kind of core points. Does that, does, does that feel the same in your experience? You mean as to the effect of distribution and exhibition uh, yeah, on the I, animated I, I think panels? I think the strength of the uh, the animation market and that, that the feeling that it represents right now uh, a, a moment which um, is perhaps creates opportunities where um, animation think, is more stable. I, yeah, I think that the fact that it was possible to continue with production or work on animation uh, during the COVID crisis and the pandemic and the quarantine and uh, and not with the live action has both positive and negative sides. For example, from our standpoint of view, where we work as a distributor who distributes in eight territories, we work with eight different languages. And when we work with animation, French animation or any other animation for that matter, uh, if we want to have a success in distributing the animated title that we have, we need to dub it. So in each territory and market where you decide to release the film theatrically, an animated film, you have to dub it, which is a cost. And in this respect, during the pandemic, it was not possible to dub anything. So even if you had some animated titles in the pipeline as a distributor, I mean, you are sort of back-ended on that end because you were not able to prepare anything for any certain time when the cinemas are going to reopen, which we don't really know for sure. We all hope that it's going to happen sometime very soon in, let's say, July, hopefully. And uh, you still are, you know, back-ended with a pipeline of animations that you already have or that you're being NOD'd where in fact, you know, the production continued and there was no, you know, we're going to be late or this is going to be pushed back. So it's both positive and negative in the fact that you still have a lot of animated titles that you have to prep for distribution. And then again, all the titles that uh, are new projects and have been going on and that are on sale, you have to see what you're going to do with the release schedules that are coming out as well. And, and so you, you've got 
um, a couple of really big factors. So what we know for definite, is, as Charlotte said, is that um, production wasn't halted. But what you're saying is the lack of dubbing means the economics is still challenging. You've still got to find that dubbing and it's still... Exactly. If, if you're working with animations, you know, the ones that we all like so very much, as uh, Charlotte mentioned, commercial ones that are four quadrants that, you know, are, you want to bring as much audience into the cinemas or and that will make you those rating on the television. So, yeah, definitely. And, and television, um, I, I wonder if you can give some sense of, from a television point of view, there's been no, you know, the advertising market is collapsed. So does that- It has, but quickly? again, it, yeah, but again, you know, anything that you wanted to put up or if it's new, you have to dub. If it's animated series or short form or webisodes, if you want to make it popular, I mean, sometimes despite uh, the language barrier, so we're talking like, 10 and over everybody who either speaks English or maybe somebody who speaks French, if it's in French and you can't find it in English, you know, it's, it's okay for the digital arena. But, you know, if you want to get to the core of your audience in the territory where you're working, you have to reach the audience through the language barrier. So you have to have a dubbing. And is there anything that can be done about that in the short term? I mean, for public support I don't uh, you know I'm just trying to work out there's clearly an, an opportunity but that opportunity as you've rightly pointed out has comes with a, a, a caveat it comes with a, a, a problem too definitely but it's all in the planning and that's been the most the biggest problem for everyone I think is that you know it's the x or x factor you don't really know what the schedule is going to look like or no. you can assume but then as we saw this weekend everything just changed again and you know for everyone all over the world so yeah enemy let's come to you yeah well um, maybe just um i want to not be that negative about the distribution um um well yes of course cinemas are not open we cannot go and we had the same problem as we own some cinemas as well um we had luckily a platform that we launched cinema at home that worked quite well, but I wanted to intervene about the, the dubbings. Um, actually, people could dub and, and some, some uh, dubbing studios continued during COVID, were very um, uh, creative in, in having the dubbings done. And also, um, um, which was good for, for, for uh, series that, that could continue, which means that for television, as you asked, um, it could be um, delivered with uh, some product. Um, the negative thing maybe at animation is that, and especially children's animation, is that children want to review again and again and again their most popular series that they want to see. And that broadcast is new as well. So um, in the first place, they, uh, our broadcast said, yes, I will need definitely some new stuff. But then in the end, they know that, well, they can repeat the stuff, older stuff that they have. And uh, I just heard uh, an Italian producer that said that in, Ita in Italy, they have launched a new um, uh, program where uh, they put all the series again on, um, on the television, um, classic series. And if that worked well, then uh, the Rai would um, uh, ask for new seasons. So on television, there was really, in, in terms of distribution, things going on and, and new measures taken and uh, new initiatives taken. So it was not, that negative. Although for features, yes, we cannot release them, unfortunately. It, you, you make a very important point, Anami, that when we talk about animation, it's it's too often in our heads. Uh, you know, we have the it, people's immediate assumption is of those big feature films. This animation has a lot more um, going on than that. I just wondered if, if quickly, because I want to talk to other people about this as well. We're, the market um, and can in particular has been so um, important and for a global business you those market structures are, are quite well established now 
um, and Annecy, another one in there. And, uh, you know, it, uh, the, in, for, for the French, I mean, there's, there's two films, uh, I think Joseph and Flea, that I think are under the Cannes 2020 label. And I think uh, one called Sirocco, that's in the work in progress at the moment at the market. Those, getting those films to reach their maximum uh, potential, uh, you know, in, in this particular climate. I wonder if you could give us a sense of how you think the situation with the marketplace and the ecosystem of the markets is going to work out for animation. Did you ask me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, You're involved I, in those things, aren't you? Sorry? You're involved in those, some of those productions. Yeah. I'm, I'm involved in uh, Joseph and... Uh, my other titles. I'm not. Well, I wish I would have been involved in Flea, but um, unfortunately that didn't work out because of some production spends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so I won't go into that detail. But um, I wish I would have a, a crystal ball when I that I could see how the future will be um, in terms of market. And, and again, I think there is a big uh, difference between um, like a feature length animated movies and a series. If we have a look into the, the, the series market, I think there can be done much more online than for the features. Um, we had a lot of discussions about features, whether you need to have that big screen platform to launch a title or uh, if you can do that just um, like Annecy Online, if you, I think it's really depending upon the title whether you need, um, whether you can do it with online uh, tools or not. Um, I know that that um, this, a sales agent with whom we work is already uh, thinking about an online animation MIPCOM version before the MIP. So I think that this situation in which we are now will open up minds um, towards our markets to see whether we really need to have um, a physical launch or, or for something or not. That, that, that's a, it's a very interesting argument is we don't know this year but it may be that, that there are efficient ways of doing things that maybe we explore this year that stay. Uh, Eugene, you, you presumably go to Cannes and it's, uh, uh, or you go to the key markets as a place where you find the films for your festival. How, how much of an impact has not having those physical festivals made to you and your business? Um, actually, the, for the, I've never been to the Cannes film market. Only going, I mean, around 10 times in the Anshida film market. And it's, Actually, the most of the time I spend with the director and to visit their studio and then to search the new title. I mean, that's the, my task to do for the promotion for the French animation, also to invite a program in the festival. So it seems to be like a quite a different position compared with the others. Maybe, uh, I mean, the one of the, I mean, example, the, I was asked the, like a commentary for the film, the last week for the Sherbank Sherbank's new one, like a uh, Marcel Panel, seems to be, it seems to be appeared in the can this year. However, there's no time to be participating in the can the film market. I just did search the film, not by myself, just, I mean, got heard a lot from the, the animation professional the groups. They just want me to share their the program or the, their the, 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 like, uh, the idea or the pilot of film. So it seems to be it much more the influence on, I mean, private the region to me. So not, I mean, actually for the markets, the order the Korean distributor already wait for the, the, the new title to acquisit the, the, I mean, for the film market in here. So it seems to be quite a different for the portion of the film festival or the different portion for the film, the professional, the buyer group. Yeah, that's that, that's interesting. And, and and Benoit, from your point of view, um, a lot of your business, a lot of your um, your work is about uh, it's, it's some of your strategic um, consultation is about how you get into those festivals, how you win those awards, or get into those awards. Do you see any long term potential dangers 
for um, or, or, or opportunities here in, in a changing ecosystem of markets? Well, uh, for for the most of my work is is mainly uh, focused on um, on academies, not on festivals. Even though I did some festivals in the past, but it's a massive difference for me. I relate on uh, the career of the of the short film in festivals to to analyze if there is a potential or not and see uh, how the film did in terms of exposure already because exposure is really important then to exploit and, and see what we can do with a short film. But at the moment I am more in an observation uh, position where I'm trying to see, um, I, I did a massive work for example recently for the Oscar to help them to analyze how many festivals have been impacted, how many festivals will have to uh, post uh, Oscar qualifying festival, sorry, uh, has to postpone their, their edition, how many uh, festivals succeed to create an online um, edition. And at the end, uh, I, I came out with a, a, a documents which uh, showed that uh, approximately, I would say, between 30 and 50% of the festival, Oscar qualifying festival have been impacted in some ways but most of them succeed to find a way to uh, to find so, uh, alternative solution so at the moment it uh, I, I was quite impressed by the creativity of, of those uh, events and platforms for, for films to find ways to to escape the blocking, uh, but for sure it's not a, a, a it's temporary solution, and it has to stay temporary because the real value of those festivals is to be able to 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 go there and to see the film in good conditions and all that stuff. So at the moment, I am more in a, in an observation uh, position where I I hope that this will be just a, a one year. Uh, impact and uh, that, that the ecosystem will not change that much if it has to change it it ha i hope it will be in the in the in the in the best and that we, we will learn from the creative we 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 had to to find to give exposure to the film and have more flexibility uh, mainly with those internet and digital uh, platforms okay so so chance you're um you're someone who 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 is quite regularly presumably also going to um festivals uh, what we're hearing i think is this 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 still a waiting game you know we you've you've got good at doing things in the short term you you move things onto a a platform quickly but is is other is there anything that's come out of this that makes you feel that there's a better way of doing some things that maybe uh came by accident but now look very promising that's a good question. I, I think like Binwa, we are um, observing <laughs> and, 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 and waiting a little bit to see how things go. Um, in terms of things that may be, may be useful later on, I do think that, you know, for me, the festival festivals are a crucial part of the ecosystem in terms of forming a story around the filmmaker um, and, and, uh, or, or a particular work. Um, and you, Kind of want that but the i think where you're likely to see a lot of change is how the film is ultimately delivered to the audience or, or, or experienced by the viewer um and you know whether that happens digitally or in, in theaters or in special presentations of some sort um i think that you know i think you're likely to see um i i don't, I don't know i think there's there's about a trillion different ways <laughs> that i can ideate and speculate um on, on how things experience, but I, I was thinking even about the length of time people spend in a theater and that um, there are certain certain movies we've been watching that normally like say a 70 minute film might not be seen as like a viable theatrical release um, on, on, under normal circumstances, but when it comes uh, to, you know, the next year or something and, and the idea of two and a half hours to two hours and be pretty hunting because we know about how the virus spreads i guess in an indoor space you know maybe customer tastes shift a little bit you know maybe there's you know maybe there's more openness i guess to short form content um not just um not just feature length films but um shorts and, and shorts compilations or mid-length features and things of that nature it's um, it's a really uh, interesting so you know i'm sort of looking forward yeah. 
it's it's a really interesting argument, Sorry. Charles, because it, I mean the the as we've been hearing, Anami made the point earlier on. It's a, animation takes many different forms, and I think um, there is a feeling perhaps coming out that the the there'll be short form content that works online very very well, perhaps through mobile. Uh, that's a growth market, but maybe the um, the, 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 the what we perhaps more associate French animation with is 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 the, are those bigger features. Those um, and it, it, is there a, is is for you? Is there a kind of distinctive sense still of a brand? You know, they don't like, I'm sure they wouldn't like that term, but a French brand of animation, which um, which your audience um, loves and which is is growing in some kind of sense. And is that something which is still around the big that needs to maybe to also focus on some of those new forms. Right. Um, I think that there's definitely, been, I was, you know, reflecting on it this morning um, and thinking about, you know, the last decade, say, and major French feature animations. You know, naturally, we've done, I don't know, like literally over a dozen probably um, feature length French uh, productions, um, or we've released them in the States and North America. Um, uh, but it's been a while since one of them resonated in the way that, say, the Triplets of Belleville um, or Persepolis resonated in the 2000s. Um, and I was thinking about, like, one, you know, like, um, uh, The Red Turtle, which is the Miguel Dudoc de Witt uh, film uh, that P. Millennia worked on. Um, and, you know, so much of the messaging around that film was uh, the involvement of Studio Ghibli in Japan. Um, and like the idea that this was sort of an international co-production or that it's a dialectic or a dialogue between French filmmakers and Japanese filmmakers. And I think increasingly like you're seeing, seeing um, this sort of international collaboration being part of like the French, the identity of French animation. Um, and there's so many obviously like co-productions across European territories, but um, I think, you know, increasingly you're seeing a uh, collaboration between Asian and European studios. Um, and I think that there's like a lot of opportunity there um, compared to, you know, where we were um, in the 2000s when Sylvain Chaumet was sort of the poster boy <laughs> for French animation specifically. Um, and so I think widening the market and, and, and saying like, this is not just whatever, this is not just a French film and it's not anime, but it's a unique product in, in its own right. It's not you know, just limited by the fact that it is animation, but it's like a sort of visionary, visionary cultural uh, work, you know, um, is probably, probably a way to go in terms of messaging around, around uh, French animations. Um, uh, so I, I would say the definition is, is moving pretty rapidly, um, or, or it has moved a lot. I don't know, I was sort of, again, this morning, I was trying to account for like, the 10 years that have passed recently. Um, so, um, I don't know, at, at the same time, you know, uh, I think there is a market for very culturally distinct stuff. Like um, I was thinking about April and uh, Le Monde Truquet, uh, as it's known in France, um, and, uh, or Avril et Le Monde Truquet, um, and how that film, I guess, sort of embodies a, a sort of specific, um, Bon dessiné aesthetic, and uh, you know the key art for it has these two Eiffel towers. It's one of the, it's, you know it's one of the most you know sort of memorable uh, pieces of key art I'd say that we've worked with for a long time. So thinking about that as well, um, uh, something that speaks specific to like speaks specifically to this tradition of um, uh, visual storytelling um, is, is you know another thing that comes to mind. Uh, thank you, Chance. So I mean, a couple of last points then, Charlotte. Um, I think that was I think that was a, a a big point there that the opportunity it feels to me is about expanding that global market, getting out and reaching beyond. And maybe there is that distinct sense of a French feature film, but there's also a feeling that animation can still grow as a whole. And maybe France has has the, the key role in in building up those relationships and partnerships through co-production and so on leaves quite a lot of big opportunities. Um, for the future, that maybe um, the, the demand built during the COVID period is going to make it even stronger. In, in UK, there are bridges because, as Shane said, it's difficult to say, you know, what is French animation? Like, there are, you know, different voices and, and also different ways and shorts and, you know, feature films and TV series and 
Um, as we say, uh, animation is not a, a genre, it's, it's a technique, more or something, but then you can say whatever story you want with that. And I think that is evolving. I think it comes to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, because of, you know, the training uh, we have here and the talents, you know, th there are a lot of bridges. I mean, there are a lot of French people. If you, if you have read any, you know, closing credits of any Pixar movies or even big studios, you see, you know, Dupont and, and Pierre and Francois people and Marie and everything. So <laughs> I think it comes to, you know, the talent that thanks to, you know, the system we have in education and, and the different uh, schools and, and, and things, you know, that you can groom talents. And if you pair that with the, the tradition, I would say, of authors we have in France and, and the whole system that, you know, is able to take risks and produce like some you know, crazy adult movies um, that uh, nobody wants to see, but then you come and to see it to the festival, and you're like, oh my God, that movie is great. I don't know what it is, but it's great. So I think it's a mix of nurturing talents and, and storytelling. So, so we are at the, we can say that we are at the center of a system where, and all those talents, they come back to us at one point, they will come back to France. Uh, but, but we are working a lot with productions and, 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 and things. So I think it's, uh, obviously there are a lot of uh, opportunities. You have, you know, lots of you know, challenges. And as I said, the competition with the studios and we don't have absolutely not the same system and the same budget. But I think there are uh, opportunities and, and, and the facts, if I talk for my church, uh, we know that, you know, international sales, it's, it's, a, it's a, a great uh, way to finance uh, those big budget movies and, or even smaller <laughs> budget movies, I would say. But the fact that uh, you can uh, export uh, French movies or French comp production, it's definitely a plus to, uh, once again, it's uh, to give a, uh, to give uh, the authors and the producers the means, you know, to, to, to produce those movies and, and then to earn money. But uh, so I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, in the in the next. Uh, it's it's a growing trend, you know, and uh, and we see everything changes, but there are definitely opportunities. Plus ça change, as they say, because I guess what we're saying is the, um, the, the there's this enormous. It feels like there's enormous opportunities, but to take advantage of that enormous opportunity requires um, quite a lot of that kind of investment and thinking that's about that that marries both Benoit's argument about the diverse new talent coming through sure. with the uh, the established French um, uh, auteur tradition and also just that sense of of, of, of of France helping the world find its voice through animation that seems to me a, 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 an opportunity and a challenge worth taking so we'll, we'll finish with you Christina if we may um, you rightly said uh, in coming through that um, we mustn't underestimate what those challenges are ahead. But listening to this panel, it does feel like we're saying there's this kind of historic moment um, and it won't last all that long. Things get back into the swing of things, but it feels like animation can have a, a moment where, uh, where the, the, you know, perhaps it will be essential to a film industry which has fallen backwards and needs new fresh content. Have you got any thoughts on what um, we should be doing now to really take advantage so that this opportunity isn't lost? Well, I think that first of all, well, I'm hoping that during this time when, you know, not everyone was able to do everything that they wanted that all this great French talent has had time to, you know, get really creative because what is always needed and what always travels, you know, across borders is original concept and great storytelling. And when you have that and you can put that in characters that are appealing to a wide audience, you get great product. So that's my hope in all of this, to be honest. So in, in a sense, tell great stories, know your audience, find out the best ways of living. I mean, that hasn't changed. It's just it feels like maybe animation is not really. But got... what I think, yeah, but what I think, sorry to interrupt you, but what I also think is that people during this time have found uh, or got acquainted better with different ways to get to the animated content that they want to see. 
And there has been, I'm sure everywhere, I mean, not so much in our territories as we're not a very uh, digitally sophisticated uh, market, but I'm sure that everywhere else in, in, in the world and also on the bigger global platforms, the short form animated and animated series have, you know, become something more that is uh, more accessible, let's put it that way. And I think the different formats of animated product will have an easier time to find a home, let's put it that way. So it, it feels like uh, this would be a good time for us to be thinking rather than making big leaps into uh, 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 this is uh, deciding this is what the change means. This would be a good time to reflect and go over what those opportunities are by, by all means take advantage of the, uh, this, the short term Perhaps. opportunity but, but learn. Yeah, absolutely. You have to learn from everything, you know, as in life, from positive and negative um, events that happen in your life. I mean, pandemic, great. We had earthquakes on top of that. That was just like, <laughs> great. Uh, so. Well, hopefully we can just, uh, the pandemic stuff, we have pandemic and Brexit. So I think we've... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you top, uh, no, no, you win, definitely. <laughs> I feel really uh, embarrassed at the Eiffel Tower next to me over here. I'm never going to see the Eiffel Tower again. I'm going to be stuck on our little island. But there's a good animation for you somewhere. Um, so absolutely. Just, I think there's a lot of, I think I've learned a lot during this period. I'm sure uh, the 200 or so people who uh, tuned in to sit to watch the slide, but also will be watching this, um, the, the large number watching this on Facebook, uh, where we, we've had this, we'll have this up um, as with the other sessions. I think people will find a, a lot to learn out of this. What came out to me, I think, was uh, that, there is, that de there is demand there, that demand, um, like with other products, there is a growing demand, perhaps a growing understanding of, of just how broad the potential for animation is. It's not a kid's thing. It's an opportunity to express uh, cultural ideas and um, stories in ways which uh, shouldn't be underestimated. And, and maybe this was a time when people took advantage of that, which gives us a long-term opportunity. Alongside that, there was also uh, the closing down of a lot of um, live action production. And maybe again, there was an opportunity that arises because animation didn't have quite that same level. So again, an opportunity. I think we're hearing from um, Chance that, you know, there are, there, there are ways of reaching out, of using VOD and other mechanisms to engage audience in other countries. So fantastic. And there, there as Benoit said, perhaps new, diverse, exciting new storytelling talent will be looking at animation perhaps as an opportunity in a way they weren't before. And as Anami said, not just animation meaning a feature film, but animation in its broadest sense. So I feel like all those opportunities there. Uh, Christina, I think quite rightly pointed out that there were challenges for that, for, uh, that, that came despite all of those advantages. Dubbing, as um, Eugene made the point too, I think dubbing is clearly an issue that needs to be addressed, perhaps at European level, perhaps this is something, uh, if, if we're being held back from opportunities, it feels like there's something there to discuss in the future. But out of all of that, it feels like this could be a historic moment, but I'll just leave Christina's last word as, as the correct one, which is we will win if you learn um, the lessons of the last few months and they're not necessarily the ones that we should that we immediately assume i think we need to understand more about the audiences you're saying i need to understand more about the dynamics of an ecosystem uh, that maybe is now emerging um, in order for animation to reach the historic point that perhaps it's destined to reach so thanks to the um the panel uh thanks to everyone who uh tuned in uh and hopefully uh you'll see lots more people watching this on facebook and uh, we'll be back again next week for another Uni France new reality session. Thanks very much. Bye.